Where is it? am I in screen? Sorry. You're now on the screen. Now? I'm live. Hi. Um, welcome to the Open Collab. Um, today I'm really excited that we have Emma Wright from the math department and she's going to be talking about a cool grading hack that um, she has used with her special math brain um, to create this uh, grade speculation calculator. So she's going to walk us through it and as usual we'll post what we can um, for resources online soon after this presentation. So thank you for joining us and I'll toss it over to Emma. Great. Thank you very much for being here. This is not a complicated idea. This is a very simple little idea but I've learned as a mathematician that my little simple math ideas can be appreciated by others from time to time. So I figured I'd share it. This is uh, what I call a grade speculation calculator. This comes out of my frustration. So many of my teaching ideas come out of frustration with students asking, what's my grade? And I cannot mathematically answer that and they don't understand that. Um, Honestly, until we've had at least 60% of the point opportunities in class, they're all failing, but that's not what they want to hear. That doesn't make them feel better. Um, and I can't really explain that to them. And then, okay, so maybe they are B, they are B students so far, and um, are they going to be B student later? Can we project? Can we figure that out? Can we see what their trajectory is? Um, I don't really feel that's my place to do that for a student because they're individuals and I have no idea what else is going on in their lives or whether or not they want to be a B student um, in the end. Maybe they're a B student because they are done now and they don't need to care anymore um, and C is fine. So really I felt like I should not be the person who is projecting for them. I should not be reflecting on who they are and where they're going and what they've been doing so far and I couldn't possibly do that if I wanted to. And I couldn't have this conversation with you know, 30 individual students uh, per class. So I developed this grade speculation calculator to kind of put it back on them and say, you tell me. So what this is, just it's a very simple little idea. It's just um, a grade spreadsheet, only instead of a spreadsheet to calculate all of my students' grades at once like I make for myself, this is a grade spreadsheet for an individual. So what they do is they input their, um, their grades in each little colored box there with the grade that they earn and then what it'll do per grade item is calculate points earned and points lost uh, and that then affects the range of grades that they might have for their max and for their min so as ah. they um, as they earn points as they complete grade opportunities uh, their points earned goes up so their minimum like I have earned this much goes up but then as they get, say, an 80 on the test rather than you know, 100, they also lose 20% of those points. And as negative as it sounds, it's a much better indicator, I think, in terms of where they're going because then they've lost, in this case, 20% of their 17 points towards, um, say, participation gain, um, which is what PG stands for for me. So then, as they lose points, their max grade goes down and they can start to see that range. And as we go further into the semester and we have more grade opportunities, that range starts to converge. But at the withdrawal deadline, at the six week grade deadline, uh, during advising weeks, when we still have only completed maybe 60% of the um, grade opportunities, especially with final projects and things like that, they can see that there's still a tremendous range. So they haven't, you know, they might have, um, lost the opportunity to get an A, but a B is still possible if they're willing to work for it, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. um, and they can decide for themselves, am I willing to work for it? Where do I need to work for it? Which I think is really critical. So it's just a simple little spreadsheet with just a, cute, a couple of cute commands uh, to show them how they're doing and how their um, grade items influence their final assessment. Uh, I'll show you a couple of examples. Um, once so can I ask a quick mm -hmm. question? Maybe, maybe mm -hmm. if this is later in the technical part, then just okay. stop me. Um, do you have to have your grades on like a point scale to do yes. this? Okay. So uh, that was something I was going to mention at the end, but now it's fine too. I don't have it on a slide. I don't do this in every class. In my competency-based classes, I don't have yeah. this. It's just a stamp, did you get this competency? Yeah. Um, it's another visual way of looking at their grades. So this is more for my uh, more traditional classes where they do have grade percentages attached to everything. So if I just had, because I'm from English um, <laughs> originally, so if I just had like 30% of your grade is mm -hmm. papers, 20% is this, mm -hmm. 20, um, and then of course I grade each of those things and I know how to do the math on that. Mm -hmm. That's what I've been doing since birth, you know. <laughs> 
that works with this system? Yeah, that's exactly okay. what I do in that's this class. So thing. I don't need to be one of those people who calculates everything out of a certain number of points mm -hmm. at the beginning of the semester. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you could certainly do that too, and um, I will show you. I calculate a homework grade out of a certain number of points yeah. rather than a weighted homework grade. Yeah. So um, I will show you one of my more complicated uh, grade speculation calculators that balances both of those things. Perfect. Um, but yes, this works for a this weighted grade, cool. especially because students don't understand weighted grades. Right. No. <laughs> and I really battled with the, if you can pass my finite class, you should ask, you should be able to figure out a weighted grade, but um, that's fine. They can understand this, and that's quantitative reasoning, so I'm happy. Uh, okay. So benefits of this, uh, I started doing this in one class. Um, I think I actually started doing this when we had a projected snow day on a final day. Huh. So I was like, fill this out and let me know what your grade is and <laughs> we need to plan for backup. Um, but it's, I spread, I do it in all my classes uh, that are not competency based. So my big love for this is that students reflect on how they're doing, where they can put more effort into, like if this performance is getting them this grade, then how much more do they need? Or how much can they maybe slack, not slack off, but back off if they're doing really well? Um, Just so you know, the online viewers are putting lots of hearts in Periscope right now, oh, so that's the sign that they really like Do you this think part. it's just <laughs> Justin? <laughs> no, it tells me who, I didn't see any Justin. If you're there, Justin, make sure you comment though. No, he's <laughs> advising a student right now. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, so, Students can really figure out where they need to improve and where they're capable of improving. Um, I don't have any data to back this up, but I would like to think that it helps them develop growth mindset in terms of the game's not over just because they got a 20 on a test, that sort of thing. Uh, also, from the instructor's perspective, it helps students understand class structure. When they start seeing how their grade actually takes shape, all of a sudden they're going to start asking about all of those little pieces. Mm -hmm. and what other pieces do you have that can help them? Mm -hmm. So this is a really great opportunity to remind them of their, um, their other resources, the other things you build into the class, whether it's the structure or the resources or whatever, um, to allow to help them. And so now all of a sudden they might care a little bit more and they might dig in because they didn't listen to the syllabus discussion in August. Uh, I like it as an advising tool when, um, not with my advisees necessarily, but inevitably in November I'm going to get a couple of requests from students who aren't sure whether or not they can pass my class. Mm -hmm. uh, so I sit down and have them fill this out as if they haven't already. To be honest, sometimes I wasn't sure mm -hmm. if they could mathematically pass the test. <laughs> like, so I think there's a lot of professors. Mm -hmm in other fields other than math for mm -hmm. whom this tool would be helpful as well. Exactly, and yeah. when a student, when I have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with a student, I do pull this out as opposed to my giant spreadsheet right. with everybody um, to see if they can mathematically pass. That said, the students who can't mathematically pass aren't necessarily the ones asking. <laughs> but what's nice is that the ones who are asking can see that they can pass. Now they might realize it would take a you know, Herculean effort to pass and they can reflect on that. Um, but at least you can have that conversation. Uh, one thing I have found, especially with the students who are really just gunning to pass to pull that up to a C, or the students who are gunning for an A and don't need an A+, plus, um, they might find that if they pull their homework grade up to an 80, then that gets them that C. But if they pull their homework grade up to a 90, that just gets them a different C. <laughs> like the, a sa the same GPA uh, effect. So sometimes that really helps them decide where to put their efforts in. Um, and especially um, because they use online homework and they can see their grade numbers go up, they know when they've hit that spot. Hmm. And they're like, okay, I'm good. I need, or I need to do one more homework assignment, that sort of thing. Uh, and then for me personally, in any class where I've introduced a grade speculation calculator, I haven't had a grade dispute at all, which is great to be able to submit mm -hmm. my grades with confidence that um, I'm not going to have any any fires, any student-related fires in my inbox <laughs> over the holidays. Any questions so far? Mm -hmm. uh, pro tips, stuff you probably already know. Post to Moodle, give context, uh, give them all their resources all over again, uh, because once you're talking about their grade, now all of a sudden they care, and so you want to link to everything that you might that might help them understand this stuff. Uh, and then certainly there might be things where they're saying, okay, I got an, a 90 on this paper, but my participation grade is ongoing, so I can estimate that I'm at an 85 right now, but that could change, and an 85 in September is different than an 85 in December. 
Um, in my class, there are certain things that they can resubmit or retake for um, improvement. So, I'm, but then there are certain things that they can't. So, let them know what's flexible. And I would recommend putting all of that either in the Moodle page or in the calculator itself because they're not going to stray far when it comes to asking questions. They're just going to ask the questions and answer the question in an obvious place. And then, if you can afford it, certainly in a Quirko class, I can afford it. Um, make it a class activity because they're going to be really, really motivated by their grade. Whatever it is, they're going to ask, can I get more out of this? And it becomes a game. So if you can make it a class activity and um, allow them to maybe work on something for resubmission, they're going to sit down and do it like they never had that opportunity before. Um, so I highly recommend just spending a day on it and it'll help answer those questions right away. And it almost we'll makes you finish. think that if you yeah. do have a res like I've always had resubmission mm -hmm. and drafting and whatever, mm -hmm. that it's almost nuts to do that without this, mm -hmm. right? Like mm -hmm. if you're saying you should redo this because it affects your grade, mm -hmm. then you really want them to understand in exactly what way does it affect my grade. And exactly. so I exactly. really like that. Yeah. Exactly. And they can see that. They can see what should I redo, right. which I really appreciate. Um, I think. Now I'm going to switch to the. Um, oh God! Okay. We're not <laughs> now I'm going to switch to showing you some examples. So I'm going to leave my um, PowerPoint. It's just got two more slides. So if you were to come to this resource later, I just give a little bit of explanation as to what the cells are doing. Uh, they're not terribly complicated, but just um, you can come back to this. I'm not going to go over this because why would I read an Excel spreadsheet function to you? And that's why we're figuring it out. Okay. So for example, I think the one that I was showing you is this one. Hey, hey, can you guys, Martha, Martha, okay. because we're recording. Yeah. I had to tell them to be quiet, but now they're going to be quiet. Okay. So here's the spreadsheet I was showing you. So you can see that a student might, um, in the very beginning of the semester, be doing well in class participation and doing a little less well maybe in their homework and you can see that it's starting to calculate their points earned and their points lost and so this is what I'm talking about when a student in September says how am I doing I'm like well you've earned 32 points so far and it could go down from there so your failing is not the most motivational uh, best way to engage a student um, and so this is what I consider my raw calculator in finite just for a student that's got a weighted average and they're wondering what that weight does. Um, and you give this to them blank except for, you know, the formula or whatever. Exactly. And, and they use it themselves. Exactly. Yeah. So um, sometime I think next week, I tend to do this about a week before withdrawal deadline when they're really kind of invested but debating. Uh, they would be inputting these numbers themselves. And I have here in the um, spreadsheet as well as in Moodle where to find these numbers. Um, so each student would be following along with me on their own computer, computing their own grade. But I, you do have to be very careful about taking questions on that day. <laughs> yeah. uh, so what's going on here is you're just taking, say, 70% of the 17 points towards test one, and that's how many points they've earned, and 30% of the 17 points is how many they've lost. And so the minimum grade is just uh, adding up The minimum grade is just adding up all the points they've earned. That's not complicated, but that's not necessarily indicative of where they'll end. Uh, what I think is a little more interesting is their maximum grade, which is based on how many points they've lost. So here, the maximum grade is saying, well, you've already lost 12 and a quarter points, so your maximum grade is an 87. And so is that truly their maximum grade in the course? That's possible. Right. That so can't this, be changed. Yes and no. Except for by resubmission <laughs> stuff. Or right, exactly. Yeah. So in October, their, part their participation and their homework could flex a bit, but mm -hmm. chances are this isn't going to become a 95. Oh, good point, right. So yeah. I, that's something I would talk about in class, is that they can say they have an 85 right now, and it's ballpark that, but that could change a little bit. Can that change enough to pull this up into an A-? minus? You tell me. Um, right. you know, and they can play around mm -hmm. with that, especially with the resubmission opportunity. Cool. Um, but this guy works, and this is what was on the sheet, the PDF that looked confusing, um, by saying, okay, take 100 of the points, this cell right here, and then the count a, count a function basically says, if the cell, in this case D6, has a value in it, count it. And if it doesn't have a value in it, don't count it. Which is why, for example, 
um, because this doesn't have a set, any value in it, those 17 points aren't really counted as 17 lost points, even though it looks that way. Right. And that's something to explain to the students that they haven't really lost those 17 points yet. Right. Um, and so what this is doing in this cell is saying, if D6 has a value in it, take it. And then F6 right here would just be their um, points lost. So it's been, this whole long string is basically just going through each one of these and saying, if there's a value in here, subtract off how many points they've lost. If there's a value in here, subtract off many, how many points they've lost. And so this is what makes that range. Mm -hmm. This is what allows students to see that they've lost these points, but they haven't lost those points. Um, there's probably a simpler way to do that now that I'm looking at it, but oh well. Mm -hmm. Robin, to your question earlier, uh, this is a, um, what I call my retake calculator, and my retakes are based on um, being able to redo homework and redo tests, and so then with homework, there is um, an influence of just every, every point is equal, as opposed to a weighted homework grade. And so then I just have them all sum up here, and then I do the same thing uh, with, oh, in another one I use Counta to say, have you done this homework yet, that sort of thing. And so what's nice about this spreadsheet is my retake policy is in, um, on the final you can redo the tests, but your maximum grade on your test one retake is your test one homework grade. So basically if you wanna redo the test, you have to do the homework, and the more you do the homework, the better you can do on the test. And so what this does is this will calculate um, what their test one homework grade is and they can say, okay, on test one, I got a 64 because I wasn't taking it seriously, but then I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna do my homework and I tell them where to find these scores, but they would know at this point. And they can say, okay, these are my, um, <laughs> these are my scores in, and I can see what their percentage is. Right now they only have 27% on their homework. Uh, what this should be doing is grabbing this cell right here. So that's a mistake that I can fix. Um, before I submit this stuff as a resource. Um, oops, that's not what it's doing. But what it should be doing anyway, and I, I can fix it, is basically saying, okay, well, if they earned, oh, I didn't do that. Say on the test one, it, they, were managed, they managed to bring this up to say a 78, which is great, they wouldn't necessarily get a 78. According to my homework or my retake policy, they could get 27% of that 78. In which case, now it's saying the 64 is better, so we're just gonna go with the 64. But if I was to go through and improve their homework grade, if they were able to earn back every single point, which isn't exactly possible in my class, depending on when they do their homework. Well, that doesn't look right. Oh, that's good. <laughs> 16 and 40. Now, all of a sudden, that 86% of their 78 retake creates a 67 and it's saying, okay, now your 67 is better. So in this class, I guess what the point of this example is, is I have a lot of conditional grading, basically mm -hmm. saying, I won't penalize you for trying again. I'll give you the maximum of your original and your retry. And so then I have the condition built in, which one's bigger. That's and am I right I'm in thinking that like, I'm not even a big Excel user, so obviously this is like super advanced for me. <laughs> but if I had a syllabus with my policies clearly stated, mm -hmm. it's not that hard to build the back end mm -hmm. with someone who knows what they're doing like mm -hmm. you. That is would that be right? my hope. Yeah. That would be my yeah. hope. Um, my hope is that this is kind of a test for is your grade, is your syllabus computable? Right. Basically, can the student follow it? Uh, can, if you, can you follow it yourself? That sort of thing. Uh, like like we said earlier, not all of my classes can be transferred into a syllabus like this when it's competency-based as opposed to um, points-based. Uh, but if it is points-based, in theory, you should be able to do this. Mm -hmm. Would be my hope. And I'm not an Excel expert. I actually don't really even like Excel, but I accept it. Uh, so if you had a question, you're welcome to ask me. Everything I know I learned from Google. <laughs> <laughs> um, Another spreadsheet that I was gonna show is this one, this is my old finite one. Oops, I opened on my other screen, hold on a second. So here was my old finite policy, in which case, rather than giving students retakes on the final, um, I just gave them two different grading uh, options, one where they took the final, one where they didn't, and I said, you can have 
the maximum of either one. So they could watch both of their grades change because the weights are different um, based on how they did their homework and they could basically say, do I want to take the final or do I not? Hmm. The other thing that I think is really great, I think this might be where I end, is I got, grabbed this one from Google. I haven't been able to replicate it myself, but I always have the spreadsheet in which it hides, is the lookup function. And so what this does is it, uh, it tells the student what their letter grade is because we all have slightly different expectations here. So you can associate with each range what that letter is in your class. So here, 0 to 60 is an F, 60 to 63 is a D minus, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. And I've even built in that secret rounding that some of us do, you know? Mm -hmm. So that way they can see it all for themselves and they mm -hmm. don't have to reference back to the syllabus for that. So the lookup function is really helpful and they can see these uh, letters change as they earn mm -hmm. points. And those are the two most complicated functions, otherwise it's like sum and you know average and things like that. So it's not that much of an investment um, on my part and it helps every one of my students. It cuts down my conversations. I don't get grade disputes. And then all of a sudden about November-ish, you know, two thirds away through the semester, all of my students have a new fire in their passion for <laughs> trying to finish off my class. And what's also fun is you'll see that, you know, that B plus student gun for that A minus. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden they care a little bit more and that's really nice. That's right. exciting to see. It becomes the key. Yeah, it's within range of grammar. Yeah, right exactly. Um, so I'm not going to finish in my PDF, but I think that's about it mm -hmm. that I wanted to share. Thank you very much. <laughs> And I'm just going to say one last thing, which is that um, eventually, probably in the next couple of days, we will post up a resource site on the CoLab that will have this uh, video as a recording and some of maybe Emma's raw files. Um, but one thing I'm hoping is that we might get somebody to help turn this into a little app um, over the spring semester. And Emma's looking for some help with that. So if you're out there and you want to help with that, otherwise I'll be probably um, pitching it to a student here at Plymouth State University. Um, so that maybe we don't all have to see the back end of Excel and give ourselves <laughs> freaky nightmares. Um, thank you, Emma, and I will...